Hi, and thanks for joining me. And in this video segment, we're going to talk about how to add posts into your stream on Google Classroom. Now, you will need to start in Google Classroom, so go to classroom.google.com. And as you can see here, I have three courses here. So to get started, I just click on any of my classes. And you'll notice you have three menus at the top of your classroom course. You have stream, students, and about. Now the stream is primarily where your students will interact with content that you post in your classroom. And anytime that you want to add a post, all you do is click on the plus sign at the bottom right of your screen. And when you put your mouse on the plus sign, you're going to notice that you have four options to post to the stream. You have create announcement, create assignment, create question, and reuse post. For this video, we're going to address the announcements, assignments, and reuse of posts. And later on in another video, we'll address creating questions. But to get started, if you want to create an announcement, you just click Create Announcement, and a pop-out window will open. And you'll notice first thing at the top, it shows that this announcement will be for World Geography third period. Now, you may have noticed when we started, I have three classes. So if I want to add this assignment to all three of those classes, all I have to do is click this drop down menu and I can check the boxes for the other two classes, meaning that this will be duplicated to those other classes and I won't have to retype this two other times or in most teachers cases, four or five other times depending on how many sections you teach of that course. Then the next thing that you have to add is your announcement. So in this case, I'm going to say, um, welcome to class. Download the Google Classroom app for your mobile device. Now, um, interestingly enough, I'm asking them to download the app for the mobile device, and it might be helpful for me to include the link where they can find that. So you're going to notice at the bottom of any announcement or assignment, you can add attachments. Um, the paperclip allows you to add anything from your computer. The Google Drive icon allows you to link to documents from Drive, which I prefer to do because that means that if I update that document later on and I've linked to it through Drive, then any changes I make will automatically be updated to my classroom. You can also add a YouTube video. If you click on the YouTube link, uh, it allows you to search for a video and click on the ones or preview the ones that you want to see and you can also just paste in the URL of a video if you already know it. But what I need here is to add a link, so I'm going to go ahead and click link. So I'm going to copy and paste that in and click add link. And then um, if you're going to do this for your students, um, it's kind of nice to give them this link as your first option because if they aren't using a one-to-one -one device in your classroom and they are bringing their own mobile device, uh, the Google Classroom app allows them to get in and out and submit assignments a lot faster than if they did it on the browser on their mobile device. So I'm going to add the links to both iPhone and Android here and I'm ready to go. Now the other thing that you're going to notice is that before I added these links I kind of skipped over this and this is kind of important if you want to keep everything organized. You can add topics to any of your announcements or assignments. And in this case, I'm going to create a topic and I'm going to call this class links. So anytime I make future announcements that include links that are important to the classroom and I assign this topic to it, kids can jump to the, that topic very quickly and find just the things that they need to find. And then at the bottom right, I have a button where I can click post. Now, I don't typically post things right away um, because sometimes I will be putting things out there ahead of time and I don't want students to gain access to those early. So you do have the option to schedule a post and we'll show that later on here in just a minute when we do an assignment. Um, for now I'm just going to click post and it told me that I can filter my stream and that's because I added a topic. And so you're going to notice that as we add more assignments here and add topics to them, it gives us this topics box that students can click on or that I can click on and filter our stream to just show those topics. Very handy to have. Now, if I want to add an assignment to my stream, all I have to do is go down to the plus sign and click create assignment. 
And again, don't forget, if you want to add this to multiple classes at once, click the drop down menu and choose the classes that you want to duplicate this assignment for. And then we're going to add a title. In this case, I'm going to do a lecture uh, that I created in Google Slides. So I'll put unit one lecture. And I can provide a due date. So I'm gonna click on due date and time. And where it says no due date, if I click, it'll open a calendar uh, where I can put that out there. There's actually not a due date for this as much as I just wanna show the date that we're doing this, which is Monday the 5th. So I'll click that time. And you do have the option of adding a specific time as a due date. Now, if you wanted to do this, most people would do this, say for instance, if you were giving um, a written assignment or a quiz in the form of a Google form, and you could give the specific due date being, or the due time being the time that they're with you in class. If you do that, you may want to specifically edit this separately for classes and not duplicate it up here. But in any case, it is an option. I'm gonna add the topic of unit one. And then as we stated before, uh, you can link to any document on your computer or from Drive, or YouTube, or add internet links. In this case, I want to add a Google Slideshow, so I'm gonna click on my Google Drive icon, and I'll find my lecture, there it is, and click Add. And you do have options on what students can do with that file. If you click this drop-down menu here, you can choose to have students view the file, which in this case, I do want them to be able to see the slideshow, but not necessarily edit it. So I'm gonna leave it as students can view file. If I wanted students to edit this file, I could click students can edit file, and that would mean that it would be my original document and all the students in class would be able to edit this. Now, this is nice if you want to do a collaborative activity where all the students are working on the same document at the same time. But if you don't want them to mess up your original document or edit it, then you'll want to choose make a copy for each student. That allows them to have their own copy so that they can work independently without messing up your original. In this case, I want students can view file. And then over here, I'm ready to assign. Now, since most of the time I will assign work ahead of time, and I don't want it to appear in the stream until later. So I'll click on the drop down menu and I'll choose schedule. And by doing this, I can choose the time when this actually shows up. So if I don't want students to access it until the morning of the date that it's showing, I just choose the date and time and click schedule. And so now it will show at the top as a saved post and it will arrive in my stream later on when I scheduled it to show up. Now another option that you can use like I said, with creating assignments is to assign a document to a student, making a copy for each student. So I'm gonna to choose to add this to my other two classes. And in this case, I want the students to work on a map orientation activity. And I already have this document. It's in my drive and I'll click right here to select it. But in this case, this is something that I want each of them to work on independently, as I said. So I'm gonna click students can view file and change that to make a copy for each student. So if you've ever had difficulty with students turning in online work and the naming convention that they use, you'll often end up with weird names that have nothing to do with the assignment. But in this case, Google applies the naming convention so that each document assigned to a student appears as the document name and the student name. So it takes away all of the guesswork and you know exactly who turned in that assignment. Uh, I am gonna add a due date to this, so we'll make this do the sixth, and then for a topic, we're gonna call this maps. And I will assign that. So we've done a couple of things now. These will appear in our stream or they'll be saved as drafts that will appear later as they're assigned to be scheduled later. Um, but you're going to notice that after this is completely assigned, you're going to notice in the topics box over at the left, I have these items here. And if I click on one of them, it says no posts found. Well, that was our saved post that will show up later. Uh, we have maps and there's the assignment for maps. And then we have class links and there's our original linked item. And of course, if we wanna go back to the stream, we just click the back arrow at the top left and here we are. So that allows you to filter as well as the students to filter their view when they're working. So now we're going to talk about 
the last item on our list, which is reuse post. So if I click reuse post, if there are any assignments that I have added in another class and I want to bring them into this course, I could do so. All I have to do is select the class and then look in the list and find the item that I want to use. In this case, it's a unit one quiz from one of my other sections and I'll just click reuse and it's putting it in my stream but it's opening up the assignment box so that I can edit this so if I want to change the due date for this course and use a different one than I assigned in the other class I can do that and I can also add a different topic or select one of the previously used topics that I have once I'm finished I can either click schedule or assign and in this case I'm going to schedule this to show up later because I don't want these students to take this quiz early I want them to take it on the day of only and I click schedule so there you have it uh, those are a couple of different ways that you can post assignments and announcements to your stream you will notice that once you've done this and you click on calendar uh, your calendar will now show in the future those items that you've added as assignments in your calendar and students can also go to Google Calendar and they can view these links in Google Calendar as well. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into using Google Classroom. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.